Hey, it's Nass from Astronomy. I live in the outskirts of Boston, where the skies are a Bortle Class 7. Aside from the light pollution, my house is surrounded by other houses, trees, and street lights that stay on all the time at night. But I didn't want to let that stop me from taking pictures of galaxies this galaxy season. It's been cold and I want to do as much as possible from the inside of my house. And I've been playing around with Astroberry with quite a bit of success. I will say that this is not a tutorial video, this is just to show you my successes with Astroberry. I'm working on a full walkthrough of my setup from beginning to end, um, mostly for myself, but hopefully it'll help other people set up. I am using just a basic DSLR. This is a Canon T2i. I'm using a Canon T5i. It is unmodded. It has no filters, so I'm taking pictures of these galaxies as you'll see through a normal telescope without using any kind of filters. And you'll see my results of both Galaxy and the Cigar Galaxy using my 100mm Acromat refractor. And I captured the Whirlpool Galaxy M51 with my 6-inch Nexstar 6SC SCT. This is not a telescope, this is a cat. And all of my equipment sits on my Advanced VX computerized mount, which I bought 10 years ago. And it's all running on this Raspberry Pi running Astroberry. This controls my mount, my camera and helps me plan out my night. It also helps me with plate solving and framing of the galaxies, which you'll see soon. So without further ado, let's head to my backyard and see my setup with my Orion. So I'm in my backyard. I have set up my Orion refractor, which is an F6 refractor, and I already have it pointing towards the North Pole. And I've already set I've already polar aligned using the Ioptron Eye Polar. As you can see, there's not a lot of wind movement, so it's good. And right next to it, I have the Astro Berry running on this Raspberry Pi 4. Everything is plugged in and set up, and I am just waiting for some of the clouds to clear out. Um, it's already starting to get clear, and I'm happy with it. It's extremely cold. I don't have the greatest of views. As you can see, there are trees, my house here, neighbor's house everywhere. So. I can only see clearly in the northeast part of the sky, and I'm hoping to catch Bose Galaxy and the Cigar Galaxy, which are M81 and M M82. And in the back of my telescope, I have my Canon T5i DSLR um, with a T-ring and T-ring adapter, and nothing else. So I have it plugged into my Astroberry, and I am going to try to take some pictures. So I connected to the Astroberry that you just saw using Astroberry 1.local on Wi-Fi. So I'm able to do this from my basement. I'm warm and I can connect to it um, just fine as long as the Astroberry is close enough to my house to connect to the Wi-Fi. So I'll just click start and it goes to the desktop and I'm just gonna connect and the password is Astroberry, anonymous user. Um, on the left hand panel here, I'm actually going to make this full screen so you can see everything. My F11 wasn't working. Um, the panel on the left hand side, uh, the most important thing is the device manager. So I have a couple of profiles here uh, that I've been testing. And the drivers I'm running on this profile, my T5i profile, is Astrometry, Sky, Safari, Celestron AVX, GPSD, and Canon DSLR. Um, I won't be playing with Sky Safari. Today, um, I don't have a lot of clear sky tonight, so I'm going to try and use as much of this as possible to, to test the AVX part and the Canon DSLR part uh, and a little bit of astro astrometry. Um, that's all. Uh, I won't go over the GPS either. So I'm going to turn on K stars here. It can be a little bit slow if you're over Wi Fi. Um, uh, my goal in the future is to just do everything over Ethernet if possible. So I'm going to turn on ECOS here. And I have a profile set already, so I'm just going to go over it real quickly. So it's my Orion AVX. So because I'm using my Orion refractor, the mount I'm using is the AVX CCD, the cameras I'm using a Canon DSLR. And I'm turning on GPSD, uh, which is the virtual GPS um, in Astroberry uh, that I'm telling it, you know, where I am, uh, where we are in the sky, uh, and Sky Safari. Even though I'm not going to be using it today, um, I will later on. And the prime and the telescopes are just the guide scope. Uh, sorry, my Orion 100 EQ. Just gonna click save now. If I click play, there you go. So everything is connected. So I have my Canon uh, EOS 700D. 
Um, the only option I'm going to change here is in the image settings. I'm going to go and capture target. I'm going to set it to save to the SD card. Uh, by default, Astroberry will save locally as well as the SD card. Um, or not the SD card, even if I select just SD card, um, which is fine. So I'm just going to I'm going to make sure that I have a backup on my SD card just in case if anything happens. Uh, in my AVX, um, it is connected. Uh, it is doing stuff. Um, this assumes that I am polar aligned. I don't need to know anything else here, really. Uh, GPSD, it has my coordinates that I've inputted earlier. Um, and Sky Safari, uh, even though I won't be using it, I'll go over this at some point later on. So I'll just minimize this. Um, once I have things connected, more tabs appear here. Um, the first tab I'll go is uh, the AVX, the Celestron AVX, uh, the mount tab here. Uh, the mount control is what you can use to control the mount if you're not using Sky Safari, so that you don't have to actually use um, your hand controller. Uh, and I can click Find there, and I will do uh, Bodes and it has a database of a lot of objects here. I don't know how, how many. So I'll just double click on this. And then I'll click on go to. And you can see that the status is slewing. It's because the t the mount is slewing towards uh, Bode's galaxy. Uh, once it stops slewing, it'll say that it is tracking. So there you go, it's done. So it, it is tracking. Um, the next thing to do would be to go to the mount tab and, and do capture and solve, which will do a, a plate solve. Um, so I'm doing this a little bit out of sync here, so I'll go back to that uh, shortly. So I'm going to go to the Canon or the CCD tab here. So once you're here, there are a couple of uh, things you can do. So you can do a live video, so it'll show you what it sees. Right now it's black because I, uh, I have it covered. Um, you can also do a capture or preview. You can also do start framing looping, which is um, which is something I haven't tested yet. So I will test at some point. Okay, stop. Okay. So I'm gonna set the exposure settings to uh, 15 seconds. And then I'll do 1001, uh, change my ISO to 800. And I'm gonna just rename the prefix to uh, like 555 because I don't want to confuse it with uh, whatever I have there later on. Um, so once you're here, you can add the job sequence to the queue here by pressing the, the plus button, or if you just press play, it'll um, take what's here and, and put it here. i got to change this back to 800. So, so while that's happening, I'll show you that you can change the type here. So you can set light, bias, dark, or flats. I usually, I've been using Astroberry just for lights and darks. Uh, I've had trouble with biases and flats because of their um, sub one second um, exposure limits. So it's taking a bunch of exposures. So I'm just gonna stop it um, after one more. Um, you'll see that it's, the exposure is a little bit weird. It says um, one of nine or 1.99 seconds. Uh, and it has downloaded, so I'm just going to stop it. So the next thing we're going to look at is the uh, the plate solving here. Um, so before I cut to that, uh, I just, I'll just point out that it will use, since I don't have a guide scope here, um, which is more here, uh, it'll use my Canon, uh, my 700D, to take an exposure and try to do a plate solving based on what the Pi has downloaded. And it has a couple of options here. So sync, I think it just syncs with the mount. Uh, it tells you what it has. And if you do slew to target, it'll take whatever you point it to inside the mount tab here, and it'll slew to that and it'll center it. And you'll see in a second, once the plate solving has completed that it did center uh, M81 right in the middle, which is very amazing. Um, you can change the exposures, the exposure information, the exposure um, settings here. So by default, it'll do like 30 seconds in ISO 800, but for like some dark things, um, I like doing like ISO 600 and maybe like even a 60 second exposure. And that's uh, that's pretty much it. Um, it also has polar alignment option here. I used iPolar to polar align my mount, but I've had trouble with the polar alignment here. I think I just need to give it more time, but and because I haven't had a lot of time with clear skies, uh, I've 
deprioritize this for now and just doing solution results. So we'll look at that next. So here I've already done the plate solving uh, that's outside. You can see that it, it centered M81 almost perfectly with M82 right to the right side. Um, it's amazing. This is something that I could not do. Um, so here I'm pulling up the the image right onto my computer so you can get a better look. And M81 is there, Cigar Galaxy is there, and uh, you can also see like a dust spot here, which I'll get rid of uh, with flats later on. But the framing here is more than I was expecting, so I'm very happy with this. And then back at the camera tab um, in the live version, I have let it go for a while and it has been taking pictures um, of M81 and M82 uh, without any issues. The other cool thing is that there's this center telescope uh, option here. It gives you a red cross here and I can click anywhere in, in the sky in the image here and it will actually slew my telescope to that area which is perfect if you're trying to capture something that's not in the database. You know like a comet, like a new comet discovered uh, but you know where it is in the sky. So I already have everything stacked, um, but as you can see, I captured uh, about 152 um, usable shots of the uh, two galaxies. And I also have a whole bunch of flats, a whole bunch of biases, um, and I have this many darks. So I pulled one of those light frames that you saw earlier, and you can see you know, you already saw this, you can see M81, the center of M81, and a little little bit of the structure here, and M82 is much more pronounced here. It's, it's a very bright galaxy. So this is, so this, I pulled this into Photoshop, um, changed this to a 16-bit uh, image, and I already have all my layers done. So I made sure to save them, not to flatten the images, so you can see the progression from this all the way to the end. So, you know, I played with some curves, you know, make them a little bit brighter. Um, Played with some levels and you can see more structure here. Um, in this stage I got rid of the chromatic aberration using the uh, camera raw filter tool built into Photoshop and you can see more structure as I try to darken some of the blackness of space and you know playing some more levels and finally the final result here is what I uploaded. Um, I don't know if this one looks better or the final result. I tried to put some more of the uh, the details back into um, into the galaxies here, uh, and I think I think it looks good. So from considering I took this from Bortle Seven Sky in the outskirts of Boston with just my DSLR and my achromatic refractor, um, this 15 second shots at ISO 800, and a whole bunch of them, and only for 38 minutes, I was able to catch this. So to conclude this video, I just wanted to go over some of the things that I learned working with Astroberry and my setup in my backyard. Since I'm not using any kind of light pollution filters or any narrowband filters, I've learned that the brightness of the objects matter. It affects my capture settings, such as the ISO speed and the exposure time for each of my frames. The faster the telescope, the better the result because the less exposure you need. I've also learned to take flats and bias frames manually because I've noticed that Astroberry has some issues with taking exposures less than one second. Uh, I don't know if that's a setting that I can fix, but it's something that I will need to investigate. The exposure time can also be a little wonky. Uh, for example, when I took shots of M51, which you'll see in a minute, I took 30 second shots, or I told Astroberry to take 30 second shots, but it ended up taking 30.2 seconds. Uh, it didn't matter because my dark frames were also 30.2 seconds, so Deep Sky Stacker didn't really mind. These are just the few things that I've learned uh, over the last couple of weeks of using Astroberry. Uh, again, I am planning on doing a full walkthrough of my current setup, so hopefully it'll help some people. Uh, it'll also help me document all of my steps so that I can set things up again if anything ever happens to my equipment. So subscribe to my channel to get notified of my future projects. And if you have any questions, please ask away. Let's take a look at my final results. Thanks for watching. Clear skies.